under amplifiers you have seen um, general uh, uh, characteristics of amplifiers drift and noise and then AC amplifier and DC amplifier we have seen uh, that is uh, DC amplifier is uh, uh, obtained from chopper amplifier. Now next to uh, important amplifier is operational amplifier. It is also called op amp. It is available in the market uh, in chip form and uh, this is uh, nothing but a cho uh, chopper amplifier with a high gain. It is a chopper amplifier with a high gain. So that is an operational amplifier. It is a building, it is a basic building block for many circuits. For example, uh, we can build uh, from uh, operational amplifier integrators, but uh, integrator and differentiator by suitable feedback elements, capacitor, resistance element with the operational amplifier, we can obtain these uh, integrators, differentiators. Another important uh, um, uh, usage of op amp, op amp is the instrumentation amplifier. <coughs> It is often used in uh, measurements. Uh, instrumentation amplifier is obtained from uh, three operational amplifier or five uh, operational amplifier. They are built in circuit and uh, they constitute instrumentation amplifier. It has got a special characteristic that uh, it has got high, uh, high input impedance and uh, low output impedance and better linearity. Hence, we find an instrumentation amplifier which is obtained from uh, operational amplifier by using a number of operational amplifier in circuit, it is uh, it's made use of fully. So, it is uh, one of the important amplifiers, operational amplifier. Next one is a charge, uh, charge amplifier. These are the amplifiers, uh, charge amplifier is uh, oil, oil used uh, along with the uh, P, uh, along with the transducers made up of capacitors capacitors, um, uh, piezoelectric uh, transducers, piezoelectric transducers. They have got the common property, their output resistance is very high. So, when output resistance is very high, the any instrument to read this output voltage, the uh, voltage output from these transducers should have 10 times this resistance. So, such an instrument or amplifier is not there. So, capacitor, it is a piezoelectric crystal, al almost it is an insulator and uh, uh, so many mega ohms and uh, 10 times this mega ohm you should have. So, such amplifier, ordinary amplifier may not possess such very high uh, input impedance. In such cases, we go for charge amplifier. So, main uh, characteristic of charge amplifier is uh, its uh, uh, input impedance is very large. So, it when it is uh, connected in, uh, uh, connected with uh, piezoelectric transistor for examples. So, charge and voltage amplification takes place and we can make use of it. So, charge amplifier is obtained again from um, uh, operational amplifier, yeah, it is built with a suitable feedback. I think capacitor feedback is there for charge amplifier, capacitor, capacitor feedback, capacitor feedback with a uh, operational amplifier constitutes a basic circuit for charge amplifier. The detail we need not go into that. So, that is a charge amplifier main, main characteristic, it, its input impedance is very large. So, we go for usage with the capacitor transducers and piezoelectric transducers. And the next one is impedance transforming, impedance uh, transforming amplifier, impedance transforming amplifier. Actually, it does not amplify the voltage, but still it is called amplifier. Uh, the gain is of uh, gain of this impedance and so amplifier is around 1 and less than 1 sometime. But the main use is again such transducers, uh, the, the output impedance is very large and suppose you do not have charge amplifier and we, uh, we, we have to connect it to an instrument. Instrument with a high inp input impedance is not available, then solution is impedance transforming amplifier. Say oh, two such versions are given there, one is tube circuit and the other is the emitter and other is based upon the transistor. Uh, one is called cathode follower, another is called emitter follower, but uh, both of them uh, belonging to this impedance transforming amplifier. See input voltage is here, you just check uh, the input voltage, this, this may be coming from, uh, yeah, um, uh, this may be the uh, piezoelectric crystal. So, it is uh, say for example, it is connected like this. 
So, it is uh, insulating material. So, uh, output impedance is very large and here also you will find grit and uh, uh, the cathode it is more or less open circuit. That means, here input impedance is very large. So, um, so input impedance is large that is a uh, large impedance circuit is converted into say this is R into a uh, output impedance. Now, the EO is the output voltage from this um, impedance transform amplifier that output resistance is of the order of R may be R uh, of 100 ohms. So, a high impedance the here it is high impedance, high impedance circuit and here it is a low impedance circuit. So, this whole circuit a high, high impedance circuit is converted into low impedance circuit by interposing a impedance transform amplifier that is the main purpose of this amplifier. We convert a high impedance circuit in low impedance circuit. Later on we can connect a voltmeter. This voltmeter may be of the order of 1000 ohm or 10000 ohm. Here it is 100 ohm only. So, 1000 ohm, 100,000 uh, ohm or 10000 ohm voltmeter are readily available. So, you can read now uh, you can read the voltage here uh, whatever is available if uh, a sufficient magnitude we can without further amplification we use it. Or uh, if it is too low voltage we can interpose a AC, volt, AC amplifier and then uh, amplify the uh, and then amplified voltage may be read in the voltmeter. So, that means, when we do not have charge amplifier, we can substitute charge amplifier with a uh, impedance transform amplifier plus AC amplifier both put together it can uh, uh, put together achieves the same functioning what we will achieve by using only a charge amplifier. The substitute for charge amplifier is impedance transform amplifier plus AC amplifier. So, impedance that is the main usage of the impedance transform amplifier. Next one is the carrier frequency amplifier which is very important in measurements carrier frequency carrier frequency amplifier. It is very often used in instruments wherever we have excitation voltage. Here carrier frequency amplifier is uh, uh, somewhat like this. Now, we see the carrier frequency amplifier we find this applications in case of say strain gauge. So, whenever we use a strain gauge they are forming part of the 4 ohm bridge, Wheatstone bridge and Wheatstone bridge has got 4 terminals against 2 terminals we are giving excitation voltage the other 2 terminals we take the output voltage. And uh, in such instances the excitation voltage wherever we require such uh, uh, cases we go for usage of the carrier frequency amplifier. Also uh, when you use inductive pickups later on we will be learning under uh, displaced measurement and uh, say uh, uh, in uh, the inductive inductive pickups they also will be forming uh, um, uh, uh, one, or one or two arms of a, a AC bridge. The AC bridge is to be excited that excitation voltage uh, is required there uh, there uh, this gives excitation voltage plus amplifier. Hence, uh, in such applications we find very often carry frequency amplifier. The principle is explained with this uh, block diagram we have got an oscillator mostly of the order of 5 kilohertz frequency it is a constant frequency and a constant amplitude signal this is XC we call it carrier signal and then we have got our desired signal this is our XI, XI or input signal uh, I simply re renamed it as XS signal desired signal this one and the XS and the XC are being combined at the transducer this may be a Wheatstone bridge uh, this may be Wheatstone bridge or some AC bridge. So, both the signals are combined here we have got so called uh, amplitude modulations this is amplitude amplitude modulation that is modulated signal this is the modulated signal I will call it XM this is uh, the, uh, the amplitude is uh, uh, same as the amplitude of signal and the frequency come, uh, higher frequency comes from carrier signal. So, the previously we have constant uh, amplitude now it is the amplitude is modified by the incoming input signal. So, this is the XM and um, uh, now we what we have done by this modulation amplitude modulation a slowly varying signal this may be of the order of few hertz 4 or 5 hertz and this is 5 kilohertz both of them when they combine we get another signal which is of the order of the uh, 5 kilohertz that is the frequency of the oscillator near about that it will be there we will see later what is the actual frequency. So, anyhow a slowly varying signal has been converted into a, a high frequency signal by the process of the amplitude modulation. Once we have come uh, uh, once we have got a high frequency signal it can be easily be amplified in AC amplifier without any drift problem. If we had a, if we want to amplify this then this frequency is much lower than the cutoff frequency it cannot be amplified here. 
So by this process of modulation, we converted the slow, slowly varying signal into a high frequency signal. And then now we use the AC amplifier advantageously without any drift. Um, then uh, the shape of here also will be same, but it is of higher amplitude because after amplifications, this is amplifier. Uh, after, after amplification, it will have higher but same shape. Then later on, we have got uh, so-called phase sensitive demodulator. At uh, there, we have got some synchronizing signal. That is, it will by using this signal and the phase uh, difference between the uh, between the carrier signal and the um, uh, modulated signal, we can uh, uh, we can obtain the uh, reversal here because here you find modulated signal exists on both sides, positive and negative. But here you find where the signal is there, excess is there that side. The other side is uh, super is brought this side, so that now you have got the shape of the. Uh, so once after amplification, our job is to extract the desired signal. The whole process is done to amplify this signal. That is the process that by using carrier frequency amplifier, we are amplify the signal voltage. But we cannot directly amplify here, so we use the modulation. So after modulation, we have got AC signal. And now it is ampli uh, uh, after uh, after amplification after AC amplifier. Our job is to extract the desired signal from the amplified signal. So this is the first stage. Phase sensitive demodulator. The demodulation is the negative of the modulation process to extract the signal. So uh, if we get this shape, but still it contains a high frequency signal, even though the overall uh, uh, overall variation is uh, desired signal. But this high frequency content is uh, filtered away by passing it through a low pass filter. So afterwards we find you got the output signal uh, same as same shape and uh, probably you have to draw a little larger because after amplification we are getting so we, with a larger amplitude we will have. But if you do not have so smooth si signal but we have some ripples some some of the ripples will be left over but still they, that will be of very high frequency but if you do not note when we read it in an instrument because pointer may not follow the such a quick variations. So uh, finally, we have the overall uh, overall uh, change. Only we will note. So that means we have amplified this signal by having this uh, so-called carrier frequency amplifier. That is a physical explanation how the uh, carrier frequency amplifier functions. But what is the mathematical treatment? See excess. Now, if you the amplitude modulation is nothing but a multiplication of the desired signal with the carrier signal. So if you call modulated signal as XM, XM is equal to XS desired signal into XC carrier signal. The suppose XS is AS, AS sin, sin it is sin function, omega S T that is our uh, signal uh, variation that is this variation into XC call it amplitude is AC sin omega C T. If this, this is the uh, um, uh, modulated signal. Now this can be written in a uh, different way. Uh, from trigonometry, we can write it AS into AC by 2 uh, sine of omega C minus omega S T uh, plus pi by 2 plus pi by 2. So this is our sine term uh, plus AS uh, AS into AC by 2 sin of uh, omega c plus omega s t minus pi by 2. So this is the uh, modulated, modulated signal. Now we find the modulated signal contains two side frequencies. These are the side frequencies due to modulation we have got two side frequencies omega c minus omega s and omega c plus omega s. So these are the two side frequencies. That means suppose omega uh, omega c omega c is equal to uh, or um, omega c is equal to five kilohertz in terms of kilohertz uh, and omega s is equal to say ten hertz ten hertz correspond to ten hertz. Then uh, modulated signal f uh, see omega m modulated signal will be um, five thousand ten and four thousand four thousand nine hundred ninety. These are the two frequencies uh, of the modulated signal, but we find they, it is very near the or it is varying around 5 kilohertz. And suppose uh, omega c uh, omega c uh, is equal to 5 kilohertz and uh, omega s 
is varying 0 to 10 hertz. If that is the case, then omega m will be varying, omega m will be varying 5010 to 4990. So, this is variation, but anyhow the uh, frequency is around 5000, around 5 kilohertz. That is why we are able to amplify, AC amplifier cutoff frequency by 100 hertz. So, it is very high than control cutoff value. So, AC amplifier amplifies the modulated signal. So, these are the um, side frequencies. As you have seen in the carrier frequency amplifier, a small varying signal is uh, made into a high frequency signal where it can be amplified. That is one of the main use of the carrier frequency amplifier. Secondly, any uh, disturbance from the transducer to the amplifier, suppose transducer is few hundred yards away from the amplifier and uh, when the signal is passed from the transducer to the amplifier, there may be some power line uh, that may create some voltage there and the power line we know it is of the order of 50 hertz. So, when that noise comes to the amplifier, amplifier cutoff frequency is of the order of 100 hertz. So, any noise entering into the wire also can be filtered. This is additional advantage of carry using carry frequency amplifier. There is no uh, error signal or the disturbance can enter to through the wire carrying the signal from transducer to the amplifier. That can be filtered by the AC amplifier because of the high, high frequency cutoff of the AC amplifier. And uh, as part of the uh, as part of the uh, um, carrier frequency amplifier, we have phase sensitive demodulator. And what is the uh, uh, what is the function of how the fu what is function of phase sensitive demodulator? How it is achieved? We are just seeing here. Suppose this is the uh, carrier signal which is coming from the oscillator, and this is your desired signal, and uh, the XM that is modulated signal superimposition of these two things on both sides that is the our demodulated signal. Now, that is modulation is over. Now, demodulation can take place in any one of the four, four ways. First one is off wave non phase uh, sensitive. Off wave means only from the uh, x axis all the signal available on the positive side alone is left. That is if you take one, one, si one full cycle, one full wave up to here, this is up to one full wave from this point to this point. In this one wave, one wave, only one cycle, only half the cycle alone is there. That is why it is half wave. The other half is left. So, in each cycle, only one half will be existing that, uh, that is only top side. That is a non phase sensitive. Non phase sensitive means it will not find out plus and minus of the uh, desired signal. It will signal will be there only on the positive side. That is a half wave non phase sensitive demodulator XDM demodulator. That another one is this is this also half wave but it is phase sensitive. That means, the off wave will exist where the signal exists. So, first off is positive. So, positive off the wave. The other off has been lost. So, uh, the one off has been lost, one off remaining remains here. Similarly, in the negative side, negative signal alone exists and the positive side uh, disappears. But uh, you find in each uh, full cycle, only half the cycle is there. So, hence it is called off wave, but phase sensitive. According to the polarity of the signal, so here also signal will exist. But now we see the full wave, the no wave is lost. Previously it was here, it is brought to the positive side, that is for non phase sensitive mean only positive side. The last one is brought to the uh, positive side by suitable diode circuits. So, no wave, no full cycle is lost, it is brought this side. But problem here is non phase sensitive, only positive side. This also of not much use. So, first what we have in uh, such a carrier frequency amplifier is full wave phase sensitive. That means, the other half also brought this side and uh, to the side where the signal exists. So, we find uh, without uh, losing the strength of the signal, all the signal is brought to the same side where the signal exists. So, we find phase sensitive, uh, phase sensitive, uh, full wave phase sensitive. So, this is the modulator. That is why we are writing, writing it there, phase sensitive demodulator, it, it is always meant full wave. No, no part of the wave is lost. Now, you find uh, after the phase in of the uh, after the low pass filter, this will have sufficient uh, so sufficient strength because uh, no no signal was lost. So, it has sufficient strength. If it is only half wave, the after force of, uh, low pass filter we find it will have only only of this shape, only uh, with very little strength because most of the most of them are ga I mean half of them are gap, but here we find that gap is small. So, strength will be more. 
the voltage level will be at higher, at higher level voltage will be there. That is the advantage of full wave phase sensitive demodulator. Such a modulator is always used in the carrier frequency amplifier. So that is next one is low pass filter. Low pass filter is often used in uh, mechanical measurements since uh, the mechanical signal is of the order of uh, say a few hertz, 4, 5 or 10, by maximum may maybe 10 hertz. So the, when we want desired signal which is of the low frequency, we go for low pass filter which will allow only low frequency signal, high frequency content gets uh, filtered away. A typical low pass filter is an RC uh, circuit, resistance, capacitance. So this will be the uh, EI and this will be EO, uh, R and uh, C are the resistance and capacitance. You find uh, the this will contain the both high, high frequency and low frequency signal, but when it comes out, the high frequency content, it gets short circuited. Capacitor can, uh, can uh, it can pass through it, so short circuited, only low frequency uh, component comes here. That is physical explanation how this circuit functions. In case you want a, a high frequency, uh, high pass filter, uh, interchange this place, put the capacitor here, put the resistance here, then you will find only high frequency signal can go through with the capacitor and low frequency signal gets cut off. That is opposite of the low pass filter, high pass filter. So how the, <coughs> if you uh, apply the Kirchhoff's law, you find E i is equal to, uh, E i is equal to R i, if i is the current flow through the circuit i, R i plus, this is uh, voltage drop across uh, capacitor is taken as output voltage, so E o. Now the I, e, I is equal to, we know I is equal to current flow through the capacitor, I is equal to dQ by dt and uh, uh, Q is equal to E, uh, this is equal to d uh, E 0 C because Q is equal to C into E O, so d O by dt. Now substituting here, you find E I is equal to R C, R C d E O by dt plus uh, plus E O. Now taking out E O outside, E O into R C, take, uh, R C we can put it as uh, time constants, E O 1 plus 2 D, where D is the, D is the, this is uh, our capital D, differential operator capital D. So you find E O by E I, in another other words, E O by E I is equal to 1 over 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 D. So this is a typical equation we have seen for a first order system. To find the magnitude ratio for a sinusoidal uh, input signal, E O by E I, I omega magnitude is equal to substitute D by I omega is a complex number. So you find root of 1 plus omega square to square. So this is magnitude ratio of the input to output. Process. So you find a low pass filter functions as a um, uh, first order system with a magnitude ratio of uh, one, 1 over 1 plus 1 over root of 1 plus omega square tau square. Now what, uh, what are the two, what are the functions to be achieved by the low pass filter in the carrier frequency amplifier? One, it should pass, uh, pass all the, pass the low frequency content, low frequency content, low frequency content. It should pass fully, pass fully we will say pass fully low frequency content, pass fully low frequency content. But second function is attenuate, attenuate, prob, uh, pro, pro, attenuate completely, for example, completely high frequency content, high frequency content. So these are the desired, uh, desired jobs, desired functions to be achieved by the low pass filter. It should pass low frequency content fully, but uh, attenuate completely the high frequency content. But it is this ideal functions, but uh, it is not possible. So we find finally the high frequency content may be left, uh, 5 percent may be left, 5 percent may be left. Because to realize a time, uh, time factor, uh, time constant to attenuate completely, it is not possible. So we allow very little, very little portion of the high frequency content. This is our, actually this is going to be EI containing low frequency and high frequency content. So high frequency content around 5 percent uh, ripple, that is called 5 percent ripple, it is called 5 percent ripple, it is allowed in the output of the low pass filter. But uh, uh, it should sufficiently, uh, 
um, uh, pass the low frequency content without much attenuation. This is what is to be done. So we have to, when we design R and C, we have to select suitable time constant tau so that these two functions are achieved. For example, uh, we have the uh, XC, so the uh, uh, excitation FC is equal to 5 kilohertz. 5 kilohertz, that the carrier frequency, and the FS signal frequency is uh, uh, 0 to 10 hertz, 0 to 10 hertz. In that case, the frequency of the um, frequency, we know the modulated, uh, modulated frequency varies 4,990 and 5,010. But uh, you find the demodulated signal will be twice this frequency. It is twice the F, uh, um, uh, F, F, FM. That is our uh, FDM. That is frequency of the modulated signal multiplied by 2 will be the demodulated signal because you will find here twice the frequency of this. That is approximately demodulated signal will be having twice the, the uh, modulated frequency. So uh, that is the frequency of the high frequency content. High frequency content will be having a twice the modulated frequency and the low frequency will be same as the signal frequency. Now here suppose signal frequency is 0 to 10 hertz and then in this case FDM will be so twice uh, 5010 and uh, 4990, so twice, so this is the case, so 10,020, 10,020 and uh, 9,980, this is the uh, FDM, that is um, uh, demodulated signal will be having this much frequency, that is high frequency content will be having a high uh, of this frequency uh, and signal will be having up to 10 hertz. Now if for this one, uh, if we can allow 5 percent ripple, what should be the uh, time constant? So for this 5 percent ripple we are uh, removing, allowing, so its magnitude ratio is 0.05 when omega is omega dm, omega dm, omega dm, so it's, uh, let it be lower value so that the whole thing will be uh, maximum. So the, we have got the lower, lower one, so the ratio becomes maximum, maximum value should not be, uh, should not be more than this. So we have got the substitute this uh, term here. This is equal to 1 over root of 1 plus uh, tau square into omega square is 2 pi into 9980 whole square. It is that is equal to 0.05. So here we get uh, from this we can find out tau. Tau is equal to it has been calculated. Tau is equal to 0.32 millisecond. 0.32 millisecond. That is what is uh, the time constant for a 5 percent ripple, only 5 percent of the uh, high frequency content will be there. But now we have to check whether this time constant allows the 10 hertz uh, low frequency signal as it is without, uh, without much attenuation. So uh, we find out what is this x, that is our uh, e, e, uh, x, xo by xi or eo by ei, yeah, if we got eo by ei for the desired signal, uh, I omega, for the desired signal, this is for signal is equal to um, 1 over root of 1 plus, now tau squared is 0 0.32 millisecond, 10 to the power minus 3 whole squared into omega, omega is now 10 hertz, 10 hertz that is 2 pi into, 2 pi into 10, 2 pi into 10, uh, 2 pi into 10 square. So that is the magnitude ratio for the signal and that comes about uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.99998. So it is uh, it's near about 1. So the, if, uh, this filter passes the uh, low frequency signal as it is. But there are instances, there may be instances uh, you find uh, for 5 percent ripple this time constant allows only one, th one third or half the low frequency signal. In such cases, we go for the um, double RC filter, double, double RC filter. That you will solve the problem in case this is not satisfied. Yeah, now this is uh, the double RC filter we adopt when we are uh, not getting the desired uh, uh, passage of the uh, low frequency signal. When it is too much attenuated for 5 percent ripple, then that problem is solved by using a double RC filter. Construction is this one. This is up to say point, this if you call point AB, 
and this is CD and uh, this is uh, EF. So, between uh, A, B and C, D, we have got one filter, one RC filter. Between C, D and E, F, we have got another RC filter. So, when you, this is a input uh, signal, input circuit to the existing circuit that uh, we, we know to avoid loading effect, the impedance of the input uh, circuit should be 10 times. That is why you find here R, here 10 times R. Here C, C by 10, that is impedance of this will be reciprocal of this. So, you have got C by 10 will have the da, will have the 10 times impedance than the C value. So, both the R and C are uh, the impedance due to C is uh, magnified. So, we find this circuit is not loading the existing circuit. So, this is a typical double RC filter and you find time constant of this circuit earlier circuit is RC. Here also 10 in 10 R into C by 10 giving rise to again RC, C, C RC. That means time constant of both circuits are same as tau. That that is how you find EO by EI for the full circuit. So, 1 over for, for this circuit 1 over root of omega square tau square and from here, here to here again 1 over root of uh, 1 over root of 1, over, 1 plus omega square tau square. So, both multiply you got root disappears here. So, the magnitude ratio for the full double RC filter is this one. So, this in this case you take um, uh, you take an example the, the, that is uh, FC uh, is uh, again 5000 hertz, 5 kilohertz what we are using and uh, suppose signal is varying. 0 to 500 hertz. If this is the case, uh, how the single RC filter? Now we will take single RC filter. Single RC filter. What it does for this signal? For this signal, for this pair, what we, what it does? We can uh, go, work out in the same way as we have done earlier. Uh, now you find the FM. Uh, F, FM will be 4,500 to 5,500. 5500. So, FDM is double this. So, 9000 to um, uh, 11000, 11000 hertz. So, we take the smaller value. So, if you work out uh, 0.05, that is the ripples allowed uh, 1 over uh, 1 plus omega square 2 pi 9000, 2 pi 9000 square into tau square. Now, that is single RC filter. So, tau you get from here as uh, point uh, 0.35, 0 0.35 millisecond, 0 0.35 millisecond. That is the ripple allowed uh, of the 9000 hertz ripples allowed. For this ripple, uh, for, for this time constant of 5 percent ripple, what happens to the low frequency signal 500 hertz, 500 hertz what will happens? That is, uh, 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 e, e o by E i of the desired signal for the signal is equal to 1 over uh, 1 plus uh, that is this is root of this. This is single RC filter. So, root of this uh, root of 1 plus omega squared omega is 2 pi is 500. 500 is the uh, signal. So, 500 2 pi into 500 whole squared into uh, tau squared 0 0.35 into 10 to the power of minus 3 square. So, this is this you have got only as 0.67. So, now we find 500 hertz signal is uh, attenuated to two third of its value 0.667 will be two third of its value, one third of the value is lost. So, this is not satisfactory. So, when the input signal is of higher value, then the attenuation taking place for say, low, I mean, say desired signal is large. So, in such situations, we go for the double RC filter. Now, we apply for the double RC filter double RC filter. Now, give, give this uh, signals that is uh, modulate, modulate, de demodulated signal instead of to the single RC filter, give it to double RC filter. This will be EA, EA from the uh, uh, from the demodulator, it is connected here having this frequency 9000 to 11000 hertz. Now, in this case again for the 5 percent ripple, you have got uh, 1 over 1 plus omega squared is 2 pi into 9000 square into tau square. So, here tau is equal to uh, tau is equal to point not pi not 7 7 millisecond though that is millisecond. And for this time constant the uh, E o by E i i omega of the signal will be uh, 1 over 1 plus 2 pi uh, that is now 500 2 pi into 500 square into tau square 0.077 into 10 to the power of minus 3 
that is millisecond, so minus 3 square. Now, this you have got as 0.94. So, now this is acceptable since the uh, low frequency signal has got uh, 0.94 times, and 94 percent, 94 percent of the low frequency signal comes out from the double RC filter. If the same signal when it is given to the single RC filter up to CD alone, if it is single RC filter, we get only two third of the magnitude. So, that is how we solve the problem of uh, the uh, solve sometimes the problem of single RC filter with a double RC filter. So, this is these are the design aspects for a low pass filter. Yeah, we have seen uh, for a uh, low pass filter. Uh, how to arrive at uh, time constant that what you have seen earlier to satisfy the two conditions that it should uh, uh, pass the low frequency signal and uh, cut off the uh, high frequency signal uh, so that a maximum ripple of 5 per uh, 5 percent can be left 5 percent of the amplitude of the high frequency signal may be left out in the uh, in the sig uh, signal output of the low pass filter. So, we have seen um, how to arrive at that particular time constant. If that time constant does not satisfy, does not satisfy the low frequency signal, then we go for double, uh, double, um, uh, R, double RC filter. So, if suppose we arrived at a time constant of uh, for a single RC filter, time constant of 0 0.32 millisecond, which we worked out last time, then you have to correspondingly select, select R and C to arrive at this time constant. For that, we see say, suppose the instrument uh, volt, voltage, ins, uh, voltage measuring instrument. Our voltmeter has got uh, with the voltmeter we are going to read the voltage output of the um, uh, of the filter. Suppose that voltmeter has got 10 to the power of 4 ohm, then uh, this uh, circuit filter circuit comes earlier than the voltmeter. Voltmeter is last uh, last unit, so it should have 10 times smaller one, so that this will be 10 times uh, so uh, 10 times of this in uh, output voltage. So naturally uh, output resistance. So R should be 10 to the power of 3 ohm, so that incoming instrument has uh, maximum 10, uh, 10, uh, 10 times the resistance, so it becomes 10 to the power of 4. So, once we fix the R of the filter circuit as uh, 10 to the power of 3 ohm, then we know tos equal to RC, tos equal to RC. So, R is already 10 to the power of 3 ohm. So, the capacitance will be equal to 0 0.32, this um, uh, resistance comes here 10, 10 to the power of, uh, by again you divide by 10 to the power of 3. So, it becomes capacitance equal to 10 to the power of uh, 0 0.32 microfarad. So, now with this uh, two, capa two resistance capacitance, we have got the time constant, required time constant. That is how we designed the fil uh, filter circuit. Now, we go to the next topic that is radio telemetry. When we have to adopt this radio telemetry, that is to be seen first. Uh, now, there are, certain there are certain instances where the full instrumentation can cannot be located at one place. For example, in a shaft, uh, rotating shaft, some torque is there. Uh, torque is uh, transmitted by the shaft and we want to measure the torque, it is a rotating shaft. So, we fix the strain gauges at 45 degrees which you will learn later uh, for 45 degrees. So, you have got terminals, another two strain gauges uh, uh, behind. So, four strain gauges built in uh, bridge circuit and you will have four terminals. Uh, four t for the bridge network, you have got four corners, we have seen the, for the bridge network, we have got four corners. Uh, two for the supply and two for the, these are the two A and A, say, say A and C for the supply, B and D for the output. So, these four or uh, four terminals are to be connected to the further instrumentations. So, this uh, uh, B, B and D may be connected to an amplifier and A and B, A and C to be connected to the power supply. So, four uh, corners we have, four terminals and you have to take that, uh, connect the four terminals, but the shaft is rotating. So, what is solution? One solution is radio telemetry. You will have a transmitter which will uh, which will connect these four terminals to a standby instrumentations, say power supply and signal processors, output unit, all at the ground floor. And this is rotating uh, say system. So, to connect these two things, we will have the own antenna here, which will transmit the uh, which will transmit the uh, signal for, for all the four uh, four uh, terminals. And similarly. Uh, here also you will have an antenna which will uh, carry this 
which will carry this uh, signal, the four terminal si signal or voltage supply, whatever it is, uh, will be carrying it there. So that is this is this is the radio telemetry. The uh, separated instrumentation systems are connected together by radio telemetry without any physical contact. This is only instances where radio telemetry is made use of. Second instance is suppose you have got an uh, um, uh, an aeroplane, so and uh, suppose it is an uh, any uh, enemy aeroplane and we have got our missiles. Uh, suppose this missile is uh, to hit it, and uh, for that uh, we have to develop we have to develop the technology. So in the defense uh, laboratories now they they select so called ground to ground to air missiles to find the efficacy of this uh, 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 ground to air missiles you should have an aircraft so that when, when it uh, uh, flies in zigzag fashion how this uh, missile hits the aircraft for conducting this test we have to use a so called pilotless pilotless aircraft yeah, pilotless aircraft pilot pilotless aircraft. So, we do not have any pilot there and uh, this aircraft should take all zigzag path. How to uh, control this uh, uh, flight that is possible only by having radio telemetry. You have the power supply or, uh, or signals at the ground and uh, give the uh, for the radar where to how to turn and all we give the signal and that signal is picked up and there you have got power amplifier everything, everything there and it rotates uh, uh, let's see uh, the uh, elements of the rudder or some of the elements of the aircraft and it takes different uh, direction the flat the aircraft will take different directions and thereby uh, making it to fly at different directions then you fire this whether it hits it so you should have the all control necessary controls to the aircraft as well as the the position of this aircraft will also be uh, ref, uh, will be will be uh, picked up by the ground uh, ins ground instrumentation and uh, or telemetry systems so the instrumentation from ground to the pilotless aircraft is achieved by having the radio telemetry so there, these are the uses of the radio telemetry to uh, wherever it you cannot connect it you can go for radio telemetry what is alternative alternative you can have slip rings four slip rings four terminals for these four slip rings you can have, this is cheaper, but uh, the problem is we may have some error due to the brush contact may be uh, uh, varying uh, as, uh, as per the usage and later on you may have error, uh, you may have noise signal due to this uh, varied uh, contact resistance, varied contact resistance between the brush and the, um, the slip rings. So this is avoided by having radio telemetry. The disadvantage of radio telemetry is it is very costly, whereas slip rings are very cheap. So still people go for slip rings, but this may cost few hundreds whereas radio telemetry may cost around few lakh. So this is the main difference. Now having, um, uh, having uh, learnt about this um, um, uh, usage of this radio telemetry, now going to the principle of operations, now uh, we have got um, different constructions for radio telemetry. One of the construction is uh, say 16 channels, 16 channel radio telemetry system and that is what the block diagram is shown here yeah block diagram block diagram of a radio telemetry systems now you have got 16 channels and uh, 16 channel means for 16 sensors so here it is you have got four corners so for four four, uh, four uh, channels are sufficient for a bridge network but uh, you have got what is available in the market is 16 or 32 like that so for example if there are 16 channels you can also have 16 sensors 16 uh, 16 in uh, sensors or instruments, transducers and uh, for each transducer output may be varying between minus 2.5 volt to plus, plus 2.5 volt. Proportional to this voltage output of the transducer, you have got the voltage output from the so called um, uh, subcarrier oscillator, it is called subcarrier, subcarrier oscillator, subcarrier oscillator, uh, oscillator changes the fr uh, voltage to frequency. If the voltage is 0, we have got center frequency, say it may be about 100 hertz for example, 100 hertz and if it is 2.5 volt, you have got 107.5 frequency and here you will have 92.5, this is minus 2 point. So 92.5 to 107.5 hertz, it will be varying according to the voltage. So it converts that uh, voltage to subcarrier oscillator, voltage to frequency converter. That principle is explained there, I will come little later. 
So you find uh, from uh, the once the voltage is converted into frequency, it is all all the all of them mixed together simultaneously, so that it can be transmitted at the same time. So now it is done uh, multi uh, frequency multiplier. It is uh, probably the smaller frequency range is multiplied in terms of megahertz. So say 20 mega up to 20 20 megahertz. Like that, so for 10, 20, 30 mega. In terms of megahertz, it is multiplied. So by 100 or 10 to the power of 4 times, it is multiplied. And uh, you will have the frequency in this range. And uh, now you have got a power amplifier to cover a distance. Higher the distance, higher power is required. Then it goes to antenna. Now the antenna size is same as the um, um, uh, as the wavelength of this um, uh, wavelength of this uh, uh, frequency. Wa wavelength of the propagation, propagation frequency. Um, wavelength. So, uh, in order to have a smaller wavelength, we are increasing the frequency because speed uh, of propagation is same as light. So, higher frequency means smaller wavelength, then uh, antenna size also will be of the same order of the wavelength. So, it is received here and then we go the uh, negative, uh, I mean uh, reverse, reverse way. Here signal was converted into frequency. Now, the frequency whatever is available here, uh, go through different, uh, for example, full band pass filter 1, we have got tuning, we can select the signal corresponding to sensor 1. So, it may, for sensor 1, the, it may be varying 92.5 hertz to uh, 107.5 hertz. So, you will have a center frequency around 100 hertz. So, around this band, it will allow, then demodulate and the same voltage will come here and the, it goes through filter and uh, display and you can get the same variation of the signal variation here. So that is how the, the um, uh, uh, instrumentation is connected by this um, uh, uh, by, uh, by this radio telemetry systems. Now going to this, uh, uh, how the uh, voltage is converted into a frequency. Now we see this uh, diagram here. This is the uh, voltage to voltage to frequency converter. Voltage to frequency converter. Now, this is our voltage EI, which is varying minus 2.5 volt to plus 2.5 volt. And this operational amplifier with a feedback capacitor, it fun functions as a integrator. Now, the integrated value, that is suppose EI is varying like this. Suppose EI is constant EI1, then we find EI1 is the input. So, the operational amplifier integrator has got an input and the voltage output E capital I, E capital I will be increasing, will be increasing as per the voltage EI1 value. So, when it reaches the level, this is the level, it may be minus 5 volt or some whatever it is, we can select level, uh, level detector comes pulse generator, level can be detector, uh, can be selected in value. When the integrated voltage reaches this, then one pulse is generated by the pulse generator. When the EA is uh, increased to 5, the level detector detects that and then one pulse is made, one negative pulse, this is maybe minus 10 volts or something like that, so one pulse is made. So when pulse is made, the pulse is fed back and then we will find plus and minus, this minus value, it becomes 0, then you will find uh, this becomes the integrated value of the uh, operator, operation of that integrator becomes 0. When it becomes 0, again EA is always there, so EA even again the EA, E capital I will be increased. So that is how you find uh, uh, pulses are made at particular frequency. That is proportional to EA1. Suppose EA2 is smaller than EA1 as per uh, here, as, as per uh, this diagram. Now EA2 will be a smaller value. So the rate at which the voltage increases, integrated voltage increases will be smaller. So to reach minus 5 volt, for example, it will take more time. So from here to here, you have got a longer gap and then it, uh, then one pulse is made and uh, uh, negative pulse is fed back and it goes to 0 and the EA1, EA2 is there. So it again increases. So this, uh, this again same value, EA2. So you find for a small, uh, smaller value of uh, EA2, you find the frequency has reduced. So you find uh, the frequency of the output is proportional to the voltage here. That is how the uh, uh, subcarrier oscillator, this is subcarrier oscillator, converts the voltage developed by the sensor into a corresponding frequency and then this fre frequency is multiplied some uh, here and it is linear mixer mixing all together so that it can be transmitted. So that is how the radio telemetry functions. Yeah, with this, we complete the so-called the fundamentals of measurements. This, that is our fundamentals, fundamentals of measurements. And later we will see, that is we, we may call as second part, up to this we may call as for part one, as so in second part we will have the specific measurements like velocity, like displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, torque, temperature, flow, pressure and so on.
So that will be second part. 